Right, so just in general, how do you feel like the group has kind of come along so far this preseason? Yeah, so I think the guys are playing really fast. They're playing with great confidence. You know, they're, they're putting a significant amount of work in away from the facility. And I think it's being very visible when we get to practice. You know, they're communicating really well. They're, they're playing with great anticipation, playing with great speed and pad level. Fundamentally, I've been impressed. I hope we could continue, can continue to do that and be consistent with those things because at this position, those are things that are, that are necessary in order to be very successful. So I'm happy to see those things. Hopefully we can continue to go. And specifically yesterday was a lot of inside run, physical uh, football. How do you think the linebackers did specifically kind of responding to those situations? Well, we love, we love that type of football. I mean, we love any kind of time that we have the opportunity to get downhill and just get after you guys, right? And so I was happy to see us go through our eye progressions, be in the right spot the majority of the time. Now, we weren't perfect. There's some things we need to clean up, but it's always exciting, particularly for a second level guy, when you know that that's the type of football you want to be playing. What's the biggest difference for Kalen, maybe from five months ago in the spring and a year ago at this time? Yeah, what I'd say about Kalen, uh, you know, he's, he's a young man who's grown up. You know, being a part of the program now for the second year, he's mature, matured in a lot of ways, um, not just as a football player and understanding the game, but also as a young man away from the field. So it's been really impressive to watch him. Um, I mean, you can see him flying around. He's playing with great confidence. He's communicating. Um, he's respected by his teammates. And I think it all stemmed from the work that he put in this offseason. Um, you know, having a full offseason of consistency. I mean, we all know what we dealt with last year. I think it's showing for him. He's, he's a young kid uh, who, who loves his game. He loves his teammates. And he, um, he's been fun to coach and fun to watch. So he's just grown up, man, to be honest with you. And so he still has some growing to do. None of us are perfect yet, um, so we're still we're still pushing for that. But he has grown. So. Was there a specific moment that you saw Kalen kind of start to the, the light bulb click for him and start to build that confidence? You know, I wouldn't say it was a moment, but I would say, you know, it's it's been a process for him. He has had incremental gains throughout the course of after the season ended until this point. And so hopefully that, that growth continues at that pace, if not escalating it even more, right? But I think those growth and those incremental gains, they start to compound. And when they compound, you can, you can see the product on the field. So he's been, he's been doing some good things. So hopefully we can keep him going. What's the key to being physical enough and getting that work in that you need, but not being too physical? You know, I think when it comes to the game of ball, this particular game, that you have to always want physicality, almost violence at times, this particular position. Um, especially in the front seven on defense. I think when it comes to practicing, when we're going against our own teammates, it's about practicing, practicing smartly, right? And protecting each other in a way and how we tackle, how we pursue the ball, our body positioning at the point of contact when we're destructing blocks. I think you have to be have enough intelligence and enough football acumen to be smart about those things. But when it comes to being physical, when it's time to bang, we're gonna bang, you know? And so that's, that's something that I've been impressed with with these guys. And I'm excited to see how we, how we continue to do moving forward. How far has DJ come? You know, DJ Lundy, it's been, it's been good to watch his growth, right? Because you're, you're talking about a young man who's right down the road. Well, what did he do all high school? He was, he was a four-time state, uh, state championship wrestler. And on the football field, he played offense and defense. Here, he's been able to focus, focus primarily and almost his entirety of his focus has been on defense. Obviously, he played special teams as well. But, being able to grow in a, in a space where you fully are immersed in a particular scheme, in a, in, a, in a particular position, it allows you to grow and flourish, if you put the work in. And he's a young man who loves to work. He, he doesn't back down from anything. Um, and so I've been, I've been happy with him. He, he still has growth to have. He still has some room to grow. And, but he's, he's, been, he's taking some significant strides. Sir. When you, when you make some guys the linebacker position yeah. practice, is there a... Is there anything like similar to offensive line where certain guys work well together, or is it pretty much interchangeable? That's your job, no matter who's out there. You know, ideally, I think you'd like to be able to say, hey, everybody in the position room knows how to play every single position flawlessly and can go out and be the perfect quintessential examples of a linebacker, right? But that's not always the case. And so what you want to do is be smart and be able to supplement the strengths of the guy that you're playing next to. And so whatever that combination looks like, it does. And so that's what we've been doing and seeing how the guys work together and how they work along. And um, we, we can still have room to grow. So how much, how much has this offseason being more regular allowed you to understand that better than maybe last year when it was so disembobulated and you were dealing with what you were dealing with? You know, one thing that I think uh, football players and coaches for that matter benefit from is structure, right? Continuity and consistency. Last year, we didn't have any of that. This year we've had a lot more of those things, and because of that, I think you, you have the repetition of thought 
you have the consistency of learning and then you're able to scaffold up in terms of your teaching. You know, sometimes at times you find yourself, last year at least myself, you find yourself still teaching some of the fundamental aspects of the game and of the position. Whereas this year, you're level two and level three, and hopefully you continue to grow in that, in that way so that the guys not only understand what we're trying to get done from a fundamental standpoint, but understand the bigger picture because when things happen that we may have not been able to cover in practice, they can apply their rules. And so that's that's kind of where we're headed this year. Sir. What have you seen on some of the newcomers? Yes, sir. So um, one of the newcomers we have is Jordan Eubanks. You know, he's a younger guy. You know, he's figuring it out. He's figuring out not only playing college football, but playing college football in the ACC and then playing college football at Florida State. Those are three things separately in time, right? And so he's he's coming along. He'll he'll learn. He'll grow. Cortez Andrews, he's been a young man that I've that I've been uh, impressed with. He's come in. He's made a name for himself. Just working his behind off, um, keeping his mouth closed, and trying to be the best version of himself. Now, obviously, he's different from Jordan in the aspect that he's been around college football before. And I think he has he plays with a with a particular chip on his shoulder, being a hometown kid, being from right here, and going to Gabby High School. He he takes that with a lot of pride, and so he, he's very, very happy and proud to be a part of this program and represent us. Well, Murray Gaynor started making the switch to more inside linebacker in the spring. I guess, how has he done continuing to, to learn and expand that role? Yeah, Murray's a grind. So whatever we put in front of him, he, he will try to figure it out and process and work in the best way he can and reach his full capacity. You know, he's a, he's a young man even during fall camp where the day is very, very regimented and structured and you have very little free time. Um, he's still trying to find a way to get one-on-one -on -one field time with me as a coach. So that shows me that he's really immersed and really intent on being the best version of who he is, right? And so I've been happy with that. He's been growing. He's, we, still have, we still have a ways to go. Doing that extra work and extra, going the extra mile like he does, how much of an example has that been for those younger guys you were talking about? No, I think that's phenomenal because I think ultimately you want to, you want to, whatever position you play, you want to be a student of the game, especially a linebacker because at, at a lot of times we're like the quarterback of the defense, right? So you have, you have to have an idea of where everybody is, what everybody is doing so that, you, so that you can do your job in a way that's not only effective but productive. And so for him to do that and set that example for guys who've come, who are coming after him, particularly with the year he had last year, I think it sets, it sets the tone of what the standard is. And so if we can continue to do that and other guys can follow, I'm going to like what we're here. Is Amari a guy that has to kind of carve out a niche as a down-and-distance sub-package guy or is he somebody you think you can rely on all, all three downs? You know, I, I don't want to limit Amari. I mean, the only limitations that Amari will have are the limitations he puts on himself, right? And so I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you.